This is Gravity Simulator. It is an n-body gravitational system simulator which takes different objects of different masses and calculates the gravitational forces and accelerations between them. Our input methods are done with keyboard and mouse. As you can see here on the bottom left menu, keys 1 through 0 are assigned different mass values. These so circles here on the screen represent mass values of 1 through 8. Here on the right, as it says in this menu, we have other keys for other controls, including S for start and stop, C for clear, and Q for quit. You can create a planet by clicking on any location with the left mouse button. If you just click and you don't drag, you create a planet with no initial velocity. But if you do drag, you create an initial velocity in the direction of your click. So let's say if you click in various directions and then you press play, uh, they all shoot off in their initial with their initial velocities. And though they are affected by the gravity, it's very slight because the mass there was very it was a very small value. Um, anyway, so each object is stored as a planet type object, which maintains all the details about an each individual object within a planet class. So it maintains location, velocity, uh, mass, and radius, and other such. Um, characteristics of each object. Gravity is calculated by comparing all the gravitational forces from each object to every other object. Each object then gets a calculated net force magnitude and direction determined each frame. Acceleration, direction, and magnitude is then calculated on each object based on the masses of each object and the given forces on them. The acceleration takes into account mass, which means that if there are two objects with the same forces acting on them, the mass the mass with sorry the mass with the lighter masses will accelerate faster than the heavier masses. We also incorporate collisions so that when two objects are too close to each other, they will merge. So when the distance between the centers of two objects becomes less than or equal to the radius of either object, the program initiates a collision in which the masses are combined and the smaller object is deleted. Collisions take the masses and velocities of the separate objects and calculates the new velocities based on the new mass and conservation of momentum, leading to a fluid and realistic combination of objects. So if two masses collide, their resulting velocity is is lower than than the it's about an average if the two masses are the same but it follows conservation of momentum when two masses collide their radiuses are also recalculated as a function of volume so the program assumes constant density so when two objects collide instead of adding the radiuses together we just add the masses and then recalculate the radius for the new mass as if it's a spherical object which is what we're simulating. Object are, objects are tracked as long as their location values do not overflow instead of as soon as leaving the given window. <sighs> object masses are calculated the same way so that when a mass value overflows the object is no longer tracked. So if an object gets too massive it stops being tracked. Um, and an object will leave only if the location value overflows. The acceleration calculation uses a custom gravitational constant and a custom time multiplier in the velocity update so that the user can tweak the speed and extremity of the gravity based on their given target frame rate and scaling. So you can scale to any time frame size depending on how much effect you want to have your velocity, how much effect you want your uh, gravity to have on your object's velocities. When, um, when we create a planet and drag for the velocity, the program actually creates a start point and end point line to, to represent the, the um, initial velocity and direction. However, it is not drawn, but the line is existent and tracked within the program. Um, well, that's the basics of Gravity Simulator. Uh, thank you for watching.